opening hymn is number 634, Come Be Thankful People Come. Please stand.
Show favour, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Thanks. 
so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's gospel reading is not a class on horticulture or agriculture. Probably the best thing for us in listening to the parable of the sower and the seeds would be to discount the effectiveness of this particular soul. No good farmer would uh, sow seeds and allow uh, the seeds to grow among thorns or among anything that would take away water or light or nutrients from it. And so, Jesus allowing the weeds to grow, grow alongside the wheat is indeed something unusual and something strange. The Lord is hoping for something wonderful to happen. He has given those weeds an opportunity to grow in place so that maybe in some way they would become as important as the wheat that they're growing alongside. I say that because the important teaching in today's readings is the mercy of God and the leniency of God. And in that first reading, the willingness of God to permit repentance for our sins. We're very eager and very quick to want to define everything into categories, uh, to define them according to our own determinations. Uh, we separate things in our life that we like and dislike. And basically, uh, our personal likes and dislikes are fundamental to everything that we separate. And so the idea of the slaves wanting to separate the weeds from the wheat was something that was very human and very natural for them to do and to ask their master about it. The master decided, no, not until harvest time would that happen. If we follow that gospel accordingly, and we will notice that even Jesus says that that separation will not take place until that final moment and will be done not by human beings but by angels that the angels will be the ones to separate the good from the bad. Judas, he betrayed the Lord. And we do not know for 
fact, what Judas's destination actually was. If we believe that God is indeed forgiving and lenient and merciful God, then we have to hope that Judas accepted God's forgiveness, accepted his mercy and his leniency, even at that last moment, he possibly entered into eternal life. There are many instances in life where saints and sinners cannot be fully separated. The intermingling of the life of God in the lives of sinners and saints is something that we do not fully understand. And we're not called to make judgment on that. All that we know is that God gives us the same opportunity that He offers to His creation. And that is that we grow together and that we are called to build the kingdom of God together. And that eventually, when that moment comes, when life here on earth is ended and we are called to enter into eternal life, then we will face that moment of judgment. And God separates through the activity of the angels the good from the bad. In the meantime, we are called to build the kingdom of God, that that building should take place with great accents on mercy, forgiveness, and leniency of the Almighty God, that we should bring that to building the kingdom of God each day compares the kingdom in the last two stories of parables to yeast or leaven and a mustard seed, telling us that the building of the kingdom of God comes from minute, small beginnings. And sometimes we don't even recognize the beginnings of that kingdom of God. Can it be done without reference to God's mercy, God's forgiveness, and God's needs. He offers those gifts to all of us. They are tools by which you and I are called to build up God's kingdom. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I believe.
confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. We pray for our needs and the needs of our neighbour, trusting in the Lord's goodness and mercy. For the Church, that we may reveal God's mercy in the way that we come to the assistance of those whom society chooses to overlook, the hungry, the homeless, the imprisoned, the refugee. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For political leaders, that God's goodness and mercy may be a model for them as they exercise their responsibilities. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For the protection of all police and first responders who risk their lives daily to ensure our safety. For fair and just policing that will promote peace and well-being in all our neighborhoods, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. For those who suffer in the heat of the summer, especially the elderly, young children, and those who have difficult medical conditions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. We pray for an end to the pandemic, that God will free the human family from the coronavirus, guide all who are searching for treatments or a vaccine, and protect those who are vulnerable from the disease. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. That those who have died, especially Santiago Rosales, son-in-law of Hilda and Robert Vargas, may soon feast at the heavenly banquet of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. We also include in our prayers all of your special intentions that you have made known to us here at St. Mark's, and we encourage you to continue to call upon us to pray with you and for you for those special intentions that you have daily. We also pray for the intention of this Mass, and Mary V. Bhante, for our family members who have died, those who have died recently, we remember our friends and all who are called suddenly from this life each day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Merciful and gracious God, you welcome our pleas for mercy and forgiveness, and you never fail to respond. Listen to the prayers that we make and the prayers of all those in your care and answer them according to your will. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In preparation of the guests is number 961, Remember Your Love. Uh.
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Gustavo and Michael, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Mark the Evangelist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him,
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 My dear people, thank you for joining us in prayer today for the 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And we ask you to continue to join with us if you are unable to be with us at church on Sundays. We look forward to that day when you will be able to come back and to celebrate with us together. We want to express our gratitude to those of you who continue to support us financially. Your weekly, bi-weekly and monthly contributions are greatly appreciated. And I encourage you to continue to do what you are doing, to be good stewards and to support St. Mark's Parish during these difficult times. We appreciate everything that you are doing and we say thank you from myself as pastor and from our staff and we look forward to seeing you someday soon at our celebration of the Eucharist. In the meantime, we hope that you keep safe and that your families keep safe and that you abide by all of the guidelines and restrictions that we are called upon to maintain during these difficult times. We pray for you and we hope in turn that you continue to pray for us. And so I invite you to join with us now in praying to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Our Lady of Guadalupe, in these times of tribulation, we turn to you all. See with compassion the suffering of your beloved sons and daughters affected by the coronavirus pandemic throughout the entire world. Ask your son to have mercy on us, bring your healing to those affected, and protection to all your children. Jesus Christ, Savior of all people, grant us courage to accompany and care for the entire world in the way of sorrow and uncertainty. We seek refuge in you, and according to your promise, deliver us from this danger. Amen. Saint Anthony of Padua, pray for us. Saint Mark the Evangelist, pray for us. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The recessional hymn is number 640. There is a bomb in Gilead, number 640.